another Indian state proposes anti-interfaith love jihad law. On March 4th, Anil Vij, the Haryana Home Minister, sponsored the Prevention of Unlawful Conversion of Religion Bill. The proposed bill will, quote, uh, prohibit, quote, religious conversions which are affected through misrepresentation, force, undue influence, coercion, and allurement. The bill also aims to stop conversions through, quote, any fraudulent means or by marriage uh, or for marriage. The bill effectively criminalizes interfaith marriage and interfaith relationships, making Haryana the 11th Indian state planning to adopt this law. In Uttar Pradesh, since the law was enacted in December 2020, over 50 individuals have been arrested. Those convicted face up to 10-year jail sentences. Quote-unquote love jihad is a religious conspiracy theory which claims that Muslims across India are plotting to convert Hindu women through marriage. Uh, Raj Hivir Singh Kandan, uh, Kandan, an MP of the Indian National Congress, accused uh, v Vij and the BJP of advancing a hidden agenda in their anti-conversion bill and even tore up a copy of the bill in the state assembly. Many members expressed strong, strong opposition to the proposed bill, calling it unconstitutional, and accused BJP of creating a, quote, divide in society on the basis of religion. Okay, so how would this work in effect? Like, to work us through... So how many states have been have this law right now? So at the moment in Haryana, this is just being proposed. It hasn't been put into law yet, okay. but there i believe it's on the books in nine to ten other states how many states are there in india i think there are 28 states and principalities people correct me Wait. if i'm wrong how do you know this i didn't expect you to know this Actually, <laughs> what the hell how, how i had to sleep? create a survey of our indian uh consulates so i had to like look okay. look it's, this up for it's 28 states and eight <laughs> And eight thirty. What? Okay, you're. Why do you know these things, Susanna? You know too much. This is unrealistic. <laughs> this is like <laughs> unbelievable. Okay. You, oh God damn it. Um. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, that's a that's a huge portion. That's like more than yeah. a third of states of India. Like, I thought this is just an Uttar Pradesh thing. I thought this is like the, this level of crazy is only one state, and that's UP. But you're telling me that more than one third of India, Indian states' laws, I was going to say more than one third of India has gone crazy, but I realized that would be like a strike worthy comment to make. True. I meant laws. Okay. I'm talking about one more than one third of Indian state law has gone insane. It's gone insane. Like, how is this a secular country? How is this a secular country when one third, more than one third of its states have a law that says if you are a Hindu and you are a Muslim, you cannot love each other. They literally call it love jihad. Like they literally are have come up with this conspiracy theory in India that think that people who are falling in love with each other, they're conspiring to take down India by being better at flirting with Hindu women than Hindu men, Muslim men, just going around and being this so charming. This is the this is the Islamic, this is the conspiracy, okay, that Hindutva believes in India, okay? Muslim men are just so good at being charming to Hindu women. And they're using this superpower as a way to make the entirety of India Islamic. Okay? Throughout the Islamic history, Islamic history, Islam has taken over either by sword or by trade, but they have failed with India. So with India, they have come up with a new plan. And they all have taken classes on how to talk to women and how to be charming and how to woo them, right? They have taken dating classes, right? And flirting classes or whatever, right? They have come up with the best pickup lines the Indian subcontinent has ever experienced, right? Oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Something that 
Hindu men can never achieve. And with these, with this new power of them, they're going around India and they're just taking over Hindu women one by one, right? And all these Hindu women cannot resist these amazing Islamic charm, all right? And they're falling for them. And this is their plan. Apparently, this is their evil plan to Islamize the entirety of the Indian subcontinent. And they ha they call it love jihad. And they, they are saving the Indian subcontinent from this takeover by Islam by making this illegal, right? This is like not a joke. This is like the reality of how laws are working right now in India as the so-called secular as the greatest secular country in the world like this this is how joke your country has become like this is how pathetic this, this is a, the biggest joke that your country's law laws are a joke it's just something for the rest of the world to point out and laugh and these are the same people who are like oh we're better than the western world are you you're a laughing stock. You're pathetic. This is these are your laws. These are the laws of your country. Your your country has turned into a joke. Man, when you were describing your rendition of a love the love jihad conspiracy theory, I was cracking up because I was envisioning a bunch of Muslim men like sitting in the seminar of a pickup artist, <laughs> like their training classes. <laughs> And then literally the, what they think. the way you were describing, I was like, you know, if we were in a different political climate, this has the makings of a hilarious comedic movie. <laughs> By the way, you get, I, I hope people don't think like, I know this is funny, but this is literally what's, what they think. Like, I want you guys watch some documentaries from India. Like, this is literally, the guys, the Hindutva, okay, they have camps for men to come train to be able to detect Hindu women that might be falling for these pickup artists. They're training people to get violent whenever, like they, they're, they're, they're creating their own besiege. They're like, this is like their own is like version of Islamic Sharia, the morality police, people who are not part of like the government, people who are not the police, individual vigilantes these young boys who love these lo teenagers who are so angry about like why is this why is this hindu beautiful hindu woman who i used to think about and jack off at night why is he falling off for abdul why is he why is he falling for abdul like they're so angry right and now they're being trained in camps to go harass these girls and beat up the muslim boys they love it they're like they're so angry they're pissed. They're like, there's, they're, there's, you know, they're sexually like very, very like, I don't know what it frustrated. The, the sexual frustration has, and they want to be able to e express that in an angry way. And they go there, they have huge Hindu for camps where they show them how to detect the girls. Like imagine being a girl in this environment, like, and you have all these like Hindu Hindu for watching your act. Like, in Islam, you know how we have the concept of Qayra, when your father and your brother and your husband is like always watching you to make sure you're like acting the right way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In India, they're making it the business of every random boy to be able to come like with a stick or whatever and beat up like the guy that you're interested in and just ask you questions and investigate you even though they're not the goddamn police. And when the police shows up, they support the Hindu for guy. Like this is what happens. They like they call them, like they, they is like you would think the girls will call the police, right? Because like these men are like abusing me. Okay, they are they they're investigating me. They have holding me hostage and they're asking me who I've been with. You would think the girl would call the police, but you know who calls the police? It's the Hindu for who calls the police. They're like this girl has been misbehaving. She's been, been she's been talking to Abdul. Come arrest her, and the police arrest her. Did they arrest her? Not the not the men who are abused who have no business abusing and harassing the girl. They arrest the girl. They're like, oh yeah, why have you, why have you been? Remember talking to that Abdul? woman who was taken to jail and separated for her husband because she converted to Islam to marry her husband before this law came into effect 
and the gang made her come out. You did, you covered this on the show. The gang made her come out and show her, show them like her marriage papers. The mar- and they're just a group of random civilians. They have like, no why? authority to, to be demanding this of her. And then she had a miscarriage in prison because of like the yeah. treatment she faced. Wait, so so these people, they were investigating this poor pregnant Hindu woman who married a Muslim man and she, she was showing Hindu her or she was a Muslim. So, man. Sorry, sorry, Muslim man. But she was showing her marriage papers to, sh- to say, like, look, I married him before the your goddamn law came into power. Right. Like, look, he was she was like, I married. I'm probably I married him willingly. I, she He didn't force me. I love him. I have a baby with him. Right. Look, my papers show that I married him before your law came in and they ha- they weren't having it. They were like, show us your papers. I did like, who are you to want to see her papers? And they called the police on her, on the pregnant woman. And she got arrested and she had a miscarriage in prison. And she didn't even break this stupid law because the, she she had married that poor man when this law wasn't even in, in force. Like what like even based on your goddamn stupid barbaric ridiculous laws she didn't do anything illegal because it, it, it predates your law but she had to pay the price for it with her own baby it, it yeah, will never that? i will never get over the fact that these love jihad laws or any forced conversion laws because sometimes it's not entirely about this whole marriage aspect sometimes it's literally just trying to criminalize conversion in general and it kind of varies on the state. But I will never get over the fact that they mandate that you go register your conversion with a magistrate. And then you have to like yeah. wait a period of 10 and, days. Like and it has and has to be publicly available for for the whole this this is an intimidation. Susanna, this is an intimidation tactic. So if you if you want to marry a Muslim man, you take you have to go through a conversion or whatever they whatever the requirements are, right? But they make you make register it and that information and your name will become open to the public. That's so that these mob could go and so if the police cannot go intimidate you, this is you this is them trying for you not to go through all of this because you know that all of a sudden your name and address and everything is now available to all these people that want to come and investigate you. This is just to scare you out of it. This is a tactic. This registration and making your name public is just a tactic to scare you out of it. It's so crazy. Like, even if it wasn't public, what role does the government have in your private matter of faith? On what grounds? On what authority? Why is this allowed? Like, why? That I can never get over that aspect. It, like, this it, it's such a uh, severe like abuse of authority or use of a, a authoritative power. It try it, like it 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 makes me crazy. And the way that these people are proposing these bills, it's like no care for that at all. Their argument is that these girls are immature and they don't know what they're doing. That's what the, that's what their argument is. Yes, but this is like oh, I mean I understand too. Like you know these vulnerable people that they're trying to you know protect or protect that, them. that they they pretend to be protecting, right? But it's this is like this covers all citizens. This covers all matters. You know, it's not just about the supposedly victimized group. By the way, they make none of these arguments with the other way around. If like a Muslim girl. If all of a sudden falls in love with a Hindu man, none of that immaturity and protection is valid because this is a Muslim girl who should be Hindu and she's coming back home. They're literally mm-hmm. just calling it coming back home because if she's, if, if you know, she's from the subcontinent, she doesn't understand that Islam is not her real religion, that she should ethnic based on her heritage, based on her ethnicity, and based on her this being her land. You know, not just not just Muslims in India, but also Muslims in Pakistan. They're all should they all should be Hindu. And when a Muslim gr- a girl all of a sudden marries a Hindu man, they celebrate this. None of that protection is all of a sudden required because she's just coming back to where she belongs. And they literally, the, in- this is literally treating women like property. 
when when Muslim men marry a Hindu woman, they see that as stealing, right? And when a, when a um, Hindu when a Muslim woman marries a Hindu man, they're calling that bringing somebody back home, right? Guys, you you have no idea how many weddings these people crash and just attack weddings because apparently they know better than the bride and groom. But go on. Oh my gosh. I mean, there's just so many things about this. In some states, the law specifically makes exceptions for when it's at going, when you're converting to Hinduism. Like, it's just so blatant. In this case, so part of the, um, you know, the debate in the state assembly about this bill was the fact that, you know, the opposition is contending that this is obviously um, a politically motivated agenda um, it, with the intention of, you know, stigmatizing, harassing, and abusing minority communities, um, particularly Muslims. Um, but in this case of this law in Haryana, they're saying, well, religion isn't mentioned in the language of this bill once, like one particular religion or another. This is across the board. This, you know, shouldn't be allowed to continue. Um, and it's so, what, what's so problematic about the, these laws is that the people who are accused of these things, I don't know what the standard of law is in India, because in some countries it's different, but um, in America it is innocent until proven guilty. But and, and the burden of proof is on the prosecution, right? But in these cases of love jihad, the, it really becomes you're guilty until proven innocent, and the it the burden of proof is on you to prove that you weren't doing this. It's and it also is just like blatantly so unconstitutional, but unfortunately it is a lot easier to put these laws into effect versus take years in to challenge you know, them. India's notoriously overburdened legal system to overturn mm -hmm. this. Yeah. I have a solution. Oh boy. <laughs> I, my solution, here's my suggestion to Hindutva. Okay. I'm putting it out there for free instead of all this nonsense. This is what you do. You fight love jihad with dharma jihad. Okay? No, love dharma? No, dharma jihad is better. Dharma jihad. Let's call it dharma jihad. Okay? <laughs> All right? And you just put up, instead of camps, that you're training all these Hindu for young teenage boys on going in and abusing girls and just like beating people up or investigating and minding you know, getting involved in other people's business, right? You train them on how to talk to women, okay? And how to be better uh, at dating, at, you know, how to be not so cringy, okay? You know, you tell them to stop asking for for bobs and vagines, right? And even if, you, even, even if they want to start asking for bobs and vagines, you maybe ask them how to politely ask for bobs and vagines. Maybe like mm -hmm. if you want bobs and vagines, that's not the first message you send a girl, right? Uh -huh. Maybe you wait uh -huh. on day, maybe you wait like a couple of days until you build the report. And then, you know, after a while you ask for bobs and vagines, right? So maybe classes like that, <laughs> like just training like that, you know what I mean? So I think that would be like, the, just call it Dharma Jihad, right? I don't know if they would call it jihad because they they're, they're very sensitive about the word jihad. Okay, just maybe call it love dharma. Yeah, love dharma. Okay, that would be better. But you know, just, just helping complete. helping the incels of India get some social yeah. skills with women, and you're saying that that will completely reverse their chances with dating and realize that you know, yes, they yeah, yeah, yeah. they have something to offer too. And maybe maybe just to show some good faith with interfaith, right? Oh, you could hello. <laughs> you could invite some of these Muslims who you claim to be so good at picking up your girl, and maybe they could put on some seminars and show you share some of your secrets, right? Maybe oh, you could like, and promote interfaith unity. <laughs> interfaith <laughs> unity, like tell them like how are you picking up these Hindu girls left and right? Like show us your secrets, right? Like maybe if you're nice to them, maybe they will share your secrets with you, and then like you will have some luck with your with your woman yeah i like this idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah you like it <laughs> i think that oh would my work. god yeah. wait there was uh some pretty hilarious comments in the chat oh forever stormy is making a really good point when you were talking about how you're blown away by how almost like a third of countries 
have these sorts of laws are either proposed or on the books. And you're saying, oh my gosh, that's one third. But Stormy's making the important point that population wise, it's way more than one third. So Ooh. it's, you know, it's not just one third, it's by, one third by number, but not one third by the like population, the population what, that's actually being impacted what? by this. Yeah, yeah. States not one like third the by UP the are yeah, the right. most populated with populations as large as many, many countries combined. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Thank you for making that point. Interesting. Uh, Moss Wood is saying, Susie, watch out for the jihadi pickup artists. And after Moss said this, Imran came in and said, baby, did you fall from heaven? Because you remind me of Iblis. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, this is how they're picking. <laughs> <laughs> Imran, you need to teach some classes. <laughs> so Susanna, does that work? You were anymore? talking because this made me laugh so hard. See, it's working. If you could make a woman laugh, that's already like, yeah. This, like, I, feel like I actually feel like this would have worked on me. This made me laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh my god. And Forever Stormy is making another very good point, saying, mind you, they want to control women's choice in selecting any guy, not just a Muslim guy. These guys are believers of arranged marriage where the family decides. Yes, and that's one thing about this that I really appreciate when I see activists talk about, because in terms of the impact of this law, this is obviously going to affect um, you know, both men and women. Uh, but in terms of who this is meant to target and who this will be weaponized against, it will primarily be women who wish to marry outside of, you know, their their family's wishes or against their family's wishes. And so their freedom of choice is being greatly restricted because now there are legal and criminal consequences um, regarding these kinds of things. All for, like, love. Like, imagine... You just love someone and the stakes against you are this. And this law will be used to harass couples with the force of the law behind them because they don't do as their family says. Because anyone can kind of like file these cases against people alleging forced conversion. And now the authorities are obligated to launch a special investigation into your private affairs, your private life. It's it's wild. Um, I need to talk to my lawyer friend about if any cases have already come forward that are presented as suits or like lined up to um, repeal this kind of thing, um, because it is badly needed to go up the court system as fast as possible. Yeah, I should always have the are we the baddies meme ready whenever these people like, whenever we want to remind them that you guys like stopping people from loving each other like do you not wake up in the morning you're like what am i doing i'm actively going out in the streets and looking for people who claim to be in love with each other i want to be with each other and i'm trying to separate them like do you not at that point think like maybe i'm the maybe i'm on the wrong side of this <laughs> right do you not think to yourself like i'm literally fighting love i'm literally fighting love how do you not maybe doubt just a tiny bit when you're anti-love that you might be on the evil side of this that you might be on the wrong side of all of this we have another muslim pickup line <laughs> mustafa is saying i told the girl whose name is jenna your name means heaven very appropriate because I want to be in you. I don't, but really that worked. I didn't like that. Did, I'm not saying it. He, he said he said this, and okay, he didn't okay. say if it worked. I thought it was cringe, but okay. <laughs> All right, sure. It's making Sarah laugh. I didn't think this would work, but if they, if you make somebody laugh, that's 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 already it's okay. so funny. Is it okay? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Oh, wait, I have mail. I'll be right back. You keep reading the comments while I go. Okay. 
you know, a lot of people in the live chat are saying that they want this to be a show. Mustafa is calling for a Bollywood movie. I think, you know, like I said, right now is not the correct political climate <laughs> at all. But there's there's but there's a potential for something pretty humorous there. <laughs> Mustafa is saying that he was already in bed with her when he used that line. <laughs> so it sounds like it worked. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, people in the live chat. Oh my God. Harish is saying that women will be protected from blackmail with these kinds of laws. How? How? If it's really about blackmail, write a law that actually is related to that, not like infringing upon people's civil liberties in this way. Redress is saying when Amalvi was asked on Love Jihad, uh, for those who don't know, Amalvi is, or I can never pronounce it right is like an Islamic scholar or leader, was asked about love jihad. He said, love is against Islam. All marriages should be arranged and interfaith should be banned. Muslims actually agreed to not be having interfaith. I don't, he probably didn't literally say love is against Islam, right? Like that doesn't sound like, <laughs> I think you mean like free love or like love marriages? I, I actually heard people being like love is like a romantic concept that was like even, even Daniel Hayraju said that like these are just romantic western concepts um you marry like you don't need to, to love wait marry the person you love like these are things your family just arranges and stuff this idea that you need to be in love with somebody and this whole romantic stuff that you have is like just like something that was invented in the romantic era in europe like i don't know by shakespeare and stuff like that and it was not it was not a thing throughout history it's just like they think that it's just recent history and it's not it's not the most ideal way of going about matching people to each other like they think like it's not just about you two you selfish pieces of crap like you think about yeah oh like i love her i love him or i love her like this is about your family this is about like a whole community deciding on mm. how to come together and it's like it's you know like who cares about your own personal feelings you selfish you know <laughs> individual right <laughs> so so like yeah wild so Oh, Beng Though, this is like the final point. I thought this was good. Bengali Hindu was saying they train women with arm training to save themselves from Muslim guys as if Hindu as if Hindu men will never attack a Hindu woman. Yeah, it is it is pretty hypocritical in a lot of ways. And I've watched Wait, a lot what? of those videos. They're saying that, you know, you've, you've we've seen these footages or like news reports on um these anti-love jihad like campaigns that they go on and where they go teach women about how to like protect themselves from muslim men i support you know, that and, no but no but no, the, the, this person is saying as if it, it's ne like hindu men never attack hindu women yeah but that will that will protect them from both it's not like real self-defense it's like if he talks to you a certain way like if oh, you know if like says yeah, by like oh. stereotyping and profiling. Oh, so it's not like physical self defense. It's like this is how you know he's a Muslim. Kind of. The it didn't. It was. It was. You know, a bit lacking on the self defense, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. This is how you detect Islam. So this is how you detect Islam in the boy that you're talking to, because they they claim like they wouldn't tell you right away, and eventually for oh, so yeah, so the claim the claims I've seen is that. You know, because, it, you know, they're all part of the same ethnicity. It's not like you could tell, you know, they're, a lot of the boys are wearing the same thing, whether they're Hindu or Muslim, right? 
So the idea is that they first brainwash you and make you fall in love with them. And then they will reveal that they're, they're Muslim. Okay. So after you already fall in love with them and it's too late, right? So they're trying to equip the girls by saying like, you have to figure out where this guy is a jihadi ahead of time, right? They love jihadi ahead of time before you fall for him. And he are the telltale tell, tell signs, right? Forever yes, like the <laughs> Abrahamic radar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, you know, a lot of these Hindus, but they're very sensitive, not but just with Islam, but all things Abrahamic, right? Whether Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, they think like this, they, you know, they have, they, they like, they look at their history and they're like, we haven't had a good experience with Abrahamic people showing up at our, at our land. Like it was first the Islamic takeover and they came and raped and pillaged, right? And then after they were done with Mother India, after they raped Mother India and they, they went, you know, then the British came and they started, you know, doing their thing. So they're like, we're shutting the doors to all things Abrahamic. <laughs> like we're like cleansing this land from Abrahamic, all things Abrahamic, because based on our history, Abrahamics seem to wanting to just, you know, take, 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 take and destroy Mother India. So that's what they, that's what Rudrush they is saying, not Judaism. Actually, that's yeah. true. India is true. known for being one of the most tolerant places for Jewish people, which I think is very Well, it's not, it's, it's because they love Israel. Like, you're right, actually. I shouldn't have said Jews. And you know why they love Israel? Well, it's not, it's not always that. Like, historically, this has it's, been true. Okay, but more recently, the um, there's this been love, there's this like love relationship with Israel between India, okay? Because because Israel is going the ethno ethno route, right? And also they see also Israel as a country that is standing up to I don't know Islamic takeover of their land, right? So they're like, yes. We agree. <laughs> and also, we, like, see each other. <laughs> we want some of that. And they also see how Judaism is becoming more of a is, is moving in Israel. Judaism is going beyond just culture, religion and um, ethnicity is co is becoming defined as nationality as well. Like so it's mostly like them noticing the right leaning people in Israel who are interested in an ethno state and want to Jud define Judaism as part of the identity of the country. And they're like, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we want to do with Hinduism. Right. So they, they, they relate. They're like, we relate, you know, a lot. So that's what, yeah. Yeah. And Mustafa is making the point that it also is partially because Jews don't really evangelize. Yeah. Yeah, it might be that as well. Uh, you, you guys, did, <laughs> Wait, you no, guys, the last thing. <laughs> Mustafa gave us another Muslim pickup line saying, "Are you from medieval Arabia? Because you're making, you make, <laughs> you making me crazy." <laughs> Savannah loves these. <laughs> I do. Guys, please send me all your Islamic pickup lines. <laughs> I will be taking, I will be accepting submissions at my uh, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.